Hello everyone, it's Annie and I'm here today with a November nonfiction recommendation video because November is nonfiction November. As most people know, it is run by a book olive on her channel and I just love nonfiction November and I read a lot of nonfiction books last year for it. So I also did a video of this last year, so I'm going to link that up above and in the description. I'm not going to repeat any of those picks in this video. So all new, all new books. Um, some of them are some of my absolute favorite books ever, and they're all just amazing nonfiction picks. I tried to pick a good variety, so we have like some sciencey ones, some memoirs, some more darkish ones, uh, so and historical. So yeah, so let's go. So my first pick is a book that I read very, very recently. It is All the Living and the Dead, which the cover is stunning. This is a perfect book for the fall season, so I think it's perfect for nonfiction November. Um, this is about basically people in the business of death. So if you're a fan of the YouTube channel Ask a Mortician, and Caitlin Doughty is the owner of that channel, she has also written some nonfiction books about death, you would really like this book. Um, it deals with not just morticians, not just cremation and embalming, but also people who d work in hospice, um, people who are executioners for a living. And the author deals with all of this in a really respectful yet still entertaining way. Um, I find this stuff super, super interesting. I understand if not everybody does, but I personally do. Um, and it was just a fascinating read. Also a very quick read. I listened to it on audiobook. The author is the narrator, which always makes things better, especially if it's nonfiction. And it was just an amazing read, only nine hours long. So I highly, highly recommend this. It was just super interesting from start to finish. And I learned a lot. Um, there's a lot that we don't know about the death industry because of course it's an uncomfortable topic and it's not really widely talked about. And that's something that she also addresses. She made an interesting point, whereas if someone is going to have a baby and they've never even seen a child under the age of one year old before, of course having a baby is going to be super stressful and very scary. But of course we've all seen infants before, um, but most people have never seen a dead body until one of their loved ones passes away and that's something that she makes a point throughout the whole book that needs to really change because it can be extremely shocking and jarring and traumatic um, if you see a dead body for the first time and it's a loved one. So that was a really good point that she made and I just, she makes great points throughout this whole entire book so if you want to hear more definitely read it. Okay, another one that I read fairly recently is In Defense of Witches by Mona Cholet. This is actually a translated nonfiction work, which is great. It's translated from French, and this deals with basically the history of the patriarchy, sexism, misogyny, starting from, you know, witch trials. That famous Salem witch trials, the witch trials throughout the Middle Ages in Europe, um, basically how society then, throughout history, and still today um, deals with women and women's issues and how we are always um, at the bottom of things, basically. Um, she deals with some hard to hear topics, but everything that she writes is incredibly important. It's definitely one of the most important books I've read this year. Um, it was just stunning. The writing was stunning. The translation was great, I feel. Um, and I'm a big fan of translated books, so I'm really glad that a translated nonfiction work, which are kind of hard to find, um, made it onto this list. Um, she deals with things like how women are still not treated as well as men by doctors, how they're often gaslit, how they're given invasive procedures without proper pain management, and things like that. The still ongoing fight about whether or not women should become mothers and whether that's a choice that we can make for ourselves. So it was just super, super interesting, very, very relevant today, especially now in America, let's say. So absolutely highly, highly recommend this one. It was just wonderful. And of course, for the spooky season, the witches, it's great. <laughs> 
The next book I'd like to recommend is called The Stranger in the Woods, The Extraordinary Story of the Last True Hermit. So this book follows the life of Christopher Knight, who one day moved from Massachusetts. He drove up to Maine and left his entire life, all of his belongings behind, and started living alone in the forest of Maine. And as we all know, Maine is the northernmost state in the United States. It is incredibly freezing in the winter, so a lot of people don't really understand how he survived 27 years, I believe. Yes, 27 years alone in the wilderness in Maine. And the only reason he was caught is because he was caught stealing food um, from some campers nearby, I believe. And his story is just incredible. Um, very, very interesting, <laughs> um, very harrowing stuff goes on. And I know myself and a lot of others may have thought uh, sometimes that, you know, abandoning society and living off the grid um, might be nice. <laughs> so this definitely sheds some light on how that actually is. And of course, um, I don't want to steal things, but that is his reality because in addition to just living off the grid, um, without any real house even or shelter. He just was camping basically for 27 years. Um, he also did not talk to anyone. He didn't have money. He didn't have anything. Um, so he had to steal to survive. So it was just an incredibly interesting book and something I definitely recommend. I don't really see it that much on booktube, so I definitely wanted to highlight it here. The next book I want to talk about is Word by Word by Cory Stamper, which is definitely in my wheelhouse because I love languages, and this is all about the writing of dictionaries. So most of us take dictionaries for granted, you know, they're just always there, they always have the definitions of things, but you know, people actually have to sit down and find these definitions and write the dictionary. <laughs> so Cory Stamper is a lexicographer. Yes, <laughs> lexographer. Um, and she details and describes her life working as a lexographer for Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Um, and she talks about how all of her co-workers um, are kind of the people you would expect them to be because the lexographers don't really want to talk to people. They just want to be left alone. Um, they're very introverted and honestly it sounds like a really fun job. <laughs> um, and just reading this book makes you appreciate the work that goes into making a dictionary and it's something that again nobody really thinks about so it's definitely something that you can learn a lot from. But in addition to that it just makes you appreciate language more as a whole because there are things that we just don't think about, like certain words have so many different definitions and they all have to be included. And so many words can mean so many different things, they can mean very very similar things, so why do we even have two words that mean almost exactly the same thing? And it's just super super interesting for the linguist in me, and if you are at all interested in languages, I highly recommend this book, it was super interesting. So the next book I want to talk about was definitely one of the most important books that I read last year, which was Eat the Buddha, Life and Death in a Tibetan Town by Barbara Demick. Now, Barbara Demick has been known for her North Korean book called Nothing to Envy. However, I I read them both. Um, that one was interesting, but I also read a lot of other books about North Korea and I just didn't find that one as educational for me personally because I knew nothing about Tibet, Tibetan history, and this book covers Tibet's history from the 1950s, from when China occupied Tibet until now. I mean, they still do. They still occupy Tibet. That's the whole problem. Um, it was super enlightening, super educational, but I will say that if you already know a good amount about Tibet and the history between Tibet and China, you probably won't get too much out of this book, maybe. However, I think it is still very, very worth the read because while you may not find any new information about the history, the way that Barbara Demick weaves in the historical happenings and personal narrative stories of the subjects that she interviews is super engaging and super interesting to read or listen to. So while she also explains to us 
all about Chinese policy and how China came to Tibet and what's going on now and the liberation movement and things like that. She also tells the stories of individual people that she interviews, such as a princess whose life was kind of overturned and all of her family's power was taken away when China came to Tibet, and a young monk who was radicalized and has to choose between Buddhist nonviolence principles and fighting against China and a young schoolgirl who has to choose between her family and her Tibetan roots and Chinese money and basically living an economical an economically viable life. So it was extremely interesting and again extremely educational for me because I did not know really anything about Tibet save for that there was an, a liberation movement, but I didn't really know the history about it at all. So I'm really glad I read this book. And again, Barbara Demick's writing is very engaging, even though this is a very heavy topic. So I highly recommend this if you're at all interested in this area of the world and its history. So the next book I want to recommend is a memoir. This is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. And this is, although perfect for nonfiction November because it's a memoir, is also perfect for Native American Heritage Month or History Month. Uh, which is also November because Alicia Elliott is a First Nations member uh, of Canada um, and her memoir is just one of the most beautiful and also painful things I have ever read in my life. The cover first of all is kind of what drew me to it in the first place. It's very striking. Um, the title is based on the Mohawk phrase for depression which can be roughly translated as a mind spread out on the ground. So right off the bat we know that this memoir deals a lot with mental health health, and she explores um, the ongoing effects of the personal, intergenerational, and colonial traumas she and so many Native people have experienced. So it's basically a bunch of vignettes from her life and the lives of others in the Native communities of Canada and the US that she has gotten to know, and some of them are very, very upsetting. Um, there was one in particular about living with head lice as children that was extremely upsetting to me personally. Um, so I would look up some content warnings just to be sure, but this is definitely one of the most important memoirs I have ever read and it really needs more buzz. It only came out, I believe, in 2020. Yes, so it's not that old and it really needs to be talked about more, I believe. It is just so, so important <laughs> and so moving. Um, and. It was just great also from a writing standpoint as well. Her writing was absolutely gorgeous. So I highly, highly recommend this memoir. If there's one memoir you read this nonfiction November, make it this one. Okay, so the last book, but certainly not least that I want to recommend is The Disordered Cosmos, A Journey into Dark Matter, Space Time, and Dreams Deferred by Chanda Prescott Weinstein, who is a black and Jewish agender scientist and she is just an amazing writer. Um, this again was one of the most important books I read um, last year and one of my favorites definitely because obviously I bought it. Um, it is so good, so good and so educational, very very important. Honestly I think this should be required reading especially for anyone going into higher education or academia of any kind not just science. It is so, so good. In this book, Dr. Chanda Prescott-Weinstein shares her love for physics from the standard model of particle physics to what lies beyond it, to the physics of melanin in skin, to the latest theories of dark matter, all with a new spin informed by history, politics, and Star Trek. One of fewer than 100 Black American women to earn a PhD from a department of physics. Just wrap your head around that for a second. What? Um, she presents a vision of the universe, vibrant, buoyantly non-traditional, and grounded in Black feminist lineages. She urges us to recognize how science, like most fields, is rife with racism, misogyny, and other forms of oppression. She lays out a bold new approach to science and society that begins with the belief that we all have a fundamental right to know and love the night sky. That says it all. It says it all. Again, this is not just for science-minded people. There is quite a lot of physics and like astrophysics in here. I am not very science-minded and I was okay with it. I think she presents it in a very accessible way, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. But again, there's also the societal standpoint and social justice issues presented in this book. 
it is just so so important such an important read and it needs more hype and this cover is just one of the most beautiful things i have ever seen in my life and you really need to read this please and that is it for my nonfiction November recommendation video. Definitely let me know if you've read any of these books, but also I'm always looking for more recommendations, so absolutely let me know your favorite nonfiction book down in the comments below. I'd really love to read it. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye!